Yes, a very good morning to all of you. Right, so just to confirm if the audio video is all good. Yes, everyone, right, on the chat box, you could just confirm to me if, yes, we are connected. Yes, okay, that's great. Okay, right, so a warm welcome to all of you for the CA Final Advanced Auditing Assurance and Professional Ethics Batch, right, which is like a marathon batch which we have scheduled, right? How many of you have already started your studies for audit or for your upcoming attempt or whatever be the case for your group one, group two or so? Right. How many of you writing for the first time? How many of you were under the old course and now you have been, you know, without an option shifted to the new course and that is why you are looking forward for this batch so that you come to know, right, regarding the changes and, you know, get a grip of the subject of audit again. Okay. Right, so our batch is scheduled over a period of six days. The timing for the class is going to be 9 to 1.30, certainly with a break in between for 10 to 15 minutes. And then first we will have an overview of what all chapters are there, what all is included in the syllabus. And then after that, go ahead with the discussion of the subject. Okay, right. So you might be having some material, study material with you, probably some class notes you would have taken of any particular author or so. If not, at least institute study material. I hope certainly that is there with you. Right? Institute study material. Is it there? Okay, so you have the ICAI material or any other content as such so that as we proceed forward with the class, you know, the discussion in the class, you'll be able to analyze regarding, you know, from where you need to study and so, right, probably in case if you have the old syllabus notes, so you will have to, you know, identify the migration notes, you know, regarding whatever new chapters are included in the syllabus and so. Okay, right. So without any further delay of time, because I want to, you know, put maximum of my time in the discussion of the, uh, what you say, subject over there. Let's begin with understanding the syllabus of the advanced phase, the CA final audit over there. Right. So any guess of how many chapters are there? Yes, koi guess kar sakta hai ke kitne chapters hai ya pata hai aap logo ko already ke how many chapters are there? Yes, we have the 19 chapters. Okay, that's great, right? So we have the 19 chapters and we have the 46 standards also, which are included in somehow in these uh, chapter number 1 to 11 over there. Right, so 46 standards, which we call them as the engagement and quality control standards. Right, the engagement and the quality control standards okay so one big change which you need to uh, be aware of over here is that up to number 23 attempt it used to be the 36 standards which were applicable for your exams right so 10 standards were not there you know not applicable but now these 10 standards also have been made applicable for your may 24 exam onwards right and these 10 standards three standards in the 800 series that is 800-805-810 right then after that you have the sre 2400 and 2410 then you have the s AE, that is the standard on assurance engagement 3400, 3402 and 3420 and then the SRS, that is standards on related services that is 4400 and 4410. And so these are 10 standards 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 which were applicable for your exams till May 19. So there used to be a time where I used to be teaching all these 46 standards and then these 10 standards went away. So, you know, I was so disappointed. Oh my God. Like, you know, standards, something very much near and dear to me. And then it went away. And then came back I was like it was all old memories you know flooding back of the discussions of those particular standards over there right so 
the 800 series is discussed in chapter number 8, right, as per the study material of ICAI as well as in our book also, right, then after that the 4000 series in the chapter number 9, then the SRE in the chapter number 10 and then the SAE in the chapter number 11. Right, so you'll see in our question bank over there that there is reference given, okay, there is a question asked from the standard in May 18, November 18 or so. So you might wonder, okay, oh my god, they are applicable only in May 24. How come these references are given? So they are given because they were applicable till May 19. Right, so that is one new big change which you need to be aware of. Okay, in addition to the 36 standards, these are the 10 additional standards which are now also applicable. Cable. Right, so certainly whenever anything new or you know uh, what gets reintroduced, there is more possibility of questions coming from these areas. Right, then apart from that, earlier in our syllabus, we had a chapter called as the automated environment. Kind of the special aspects of auditing in an automated environment. Now, this is out and this has been replaced with a brand new chapter over there called as the digital auditing and assurance right da 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 d a a digital auditing and assurance right which is the chapter number 12 as per the study material as well as our book Right, so that's one new one, right? the, a replacement chapter over there. And then after that, we have the chapter number 18, which is regarding the ESG and the SDG assurance. Right, So the environment, social governance and the sustainable development goal assurance. Right, So brand new is this chapter number 8, 9, 10, 11 and then after that the 12 and 18. Right, So these are like six new chapters which are there in your syllabus. Right, which is applicable for May 24 onwards. Students who are were under the old course and now you have been coming to the new course, let me tell you there are a lot of chapters from the old course which are now not applicable for the new course. Like you know you had the chapter on the audit of insurance company. Then there was the, there was the, yes, I have to call it was, huh? peer review and quality review. Right, so now that is not applicable. Right, then you had the company audit. A company audit may only the CARO and the section 143 which is regarding the rights and duties of company auditor that is applicable but all that section 139, 140, appointment, removal, wo bolte was all that is in the self-paced learning module. Right? So that is not applicable then there is a chapter on the liabilities of auditor under Companies Act and Income Tax Act, even that is not there. Though chapter number 19 in the new course, they've made the name as Professional Ethics and Liabilities of Auditor. So when you read this Liabilities of Auditor, you might think, oh, old syllabus, there was a chapter on Liabilities of Auditor. That has come here. No. It does not come here. Ye Liabilities of Auditor, they are talking about it under the Chartered Accountants Act 1949. And this is the liabilities of auditor under the Companies Act and the Income Tax Act, which is not applicable, right? Okay, just the Companies Act and Income Tax Act. Then you had the Audit Committee and the Corporate Governance, right? So again, SEBI, L-O-D-R, again, not applicable, right? Then after that, you also have the chapter on the fiscal laws, right? The tax audit, right? The 44 clauses of the Form 3 CD. Again, that is not applicable. Then I told you automated environment chapter has been deleted and new chapter added in its place is the digital auditing and the assurance. And then after that, we also have the management audit and operational audit, which is no longer applicable. Right, so those of you who have the notes, you know, probably of the older syllabus, you know, as per the old syllabus, you can just delete, you know, or staple these pages in the book. Right, because you don't need to study these chapters like insurance company, then the peer review, quality review, company audit, liabilities of auditor, SEBI, LODR, tax audit, automated environment, and the management operational audit. Right, so I hope I'm clear. You're all able to understand yes what i am discussing so any doubts or any thought processes going on you can put it in the chat box simultaneously like in between i would be having a look at the chat box also clear everyone right you follow little bit not much expected but yeah 
obviously if you could know it all then you would not have had the reason for attending this class right so no worries at all right so anyways right so these are the chapters which are not applicable old is gold so this is in the gold mine now and now these are the six new chapters which are applicable right so the 10 new standards then the new chapter on digital auditing and assurance and then the esg and the sdg assurance apart from that we see a slight change in the chapter of the internal controls right so wherein there is a discussion on the international internal control frameworks wherein they talk about the coso coco sarbanes oxley act covid and all of that so ye discussion pehle bhi tha this discussion was there earlier also but now they have you know had a little bit elaborate discussion on these points over there right so little bit of the what you say revamping of the chapter of the discussion of the internal control mainly in the context of the international internal control framework and then apart from that forensic accounting even that part of the chapter it has been revamped Right, so little bit of changes, like you know the steps involved in cut. What you say, the forensic audit techniques, forensic accounting techniques, that is not there. Then there is a change in the discussion of the contents of the forensic report and so. So it's a revamped content. This is an elaborated content which was already there, but now more discussion. And then this is the forensic accounting where there is a revamp and the change. My screen is not visible. Visible. Oh my God. Screen is not visible. Visible. Let me then check. Share screen. No, but uh, if I have shared it on OBS, it's okay now. Okay. <laughs> so probably fine. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. No issue, okay, yeah, so now my settings got disturbed, I tried to change it, so wait, no. Okay, anyways. Hmm. Right, so forensic accounting, so there is a revamp in the content and this is our internal controls where there is a, right, what you say, increase in the content over there, right, if you only want to refer to this particular incremental or the change part in your syllabus, we've recently launched the migration notes, right, the CA final audit migration notes, right, so if you join the mig migration batch, so then you get these migration notes along with it, but as such not required now that you've joined the marathon batch but yes these notes you may decide to additionally purchase right so this is the discussion regarding the international internal control framework which i told you has been a uh, right uh, increase in content over there right then after that there is the chapter number 8 9 10 11 which is new then also chapter number 12 18 esg sdg assurance and then after that we also have the forensic accounting which has been revamped right so this 185 pages of this particular book will do the needful right of whatever uh, additional part for the old course students who have now been yes need to study under the new course okay right so now with that in the background about the change let's now try to consolidate our discussion so you know we have these 19 chapters chapter number 1 to 19 right so chapter number one right so if you study from our book it is entirely in line with the study material of the icai right so chapter number one it is regarding the quality control right so quality control in that we have the two standards sqc1 and the sa220 right so sqc1 is quality control for firms and sa220 which is quality control for an audit right so chapter number one is regarding the quality control then you have the chapter number two which is general auditing principles and auditors responsibility right general auditing principles and the auditors responsibility so again under the name of this chapter we have the discussion of sa 240 which i hope all of you know it's regarding the fraud right consider sorry the auditors responsibilities relating to fraud in an audit of financial statements then sa 240 50 which is consideration of laws and regulations in an audit of financial statements 260 which is communication with those charged with say it why am i not able to hear you 
you say man long time after which we are starting on to today no issues right so sa 260 communication with those charged with governance 299 joint audit of the financial statements and 402 service organization right audit considerations relating to an entity using a service organization right then chapter number three it is audit planning audit strategy and audit execution right so audit planning strategy and the execution obviously audit planning so there has to be a sa 300 correct planning and audit of the financial statements okay right then after sa 300 we also have the discussion of 600 610 620 all the outsiders using the work of another auditor internal auditor and the auditors expert and then they have also put the discussion on sa 540 which is auditing of accounting estimates correct 540 discussion is included in chapter number three right then after that we have the chapter number four which is the risk assessment and internal control right so risk assessment and internal control right so risk assessment discussed where right anybody any guess risk assessment where is it discussed yes anybody will you tell me where is risk assessment discussed or will you keep it to yourself okay risk assessment discussed in essay yes why am i not able to hear you bolo sit straight yes pay attention risk assessment discussed in essay okay yes very good essay 315 330 450 and right? then it also talks about the materiality so that brings in essay 320 and then you if you check the control you come to know the deficiencies in internal control so that you communicate to management tcwg right so 315 330 450 320 and the 260 okay right then we have the chapter number five which is regarding the audit evidence yes who is going to tell me the auditing standard for audit evidence Obviously, that has been your bread and butter when you would study the intermediate audit, audit evidence. Yes, exactly. It is SA. Yes, very good. SA 500. So, obviously, with 500, it brings the entire series along with it. Right. So, 500, 501, 505, 510, 520, 530 and 550. Why? Because 540 is covered upstairs. And so after 530 we directly have the 550 and then you have the chapter number 6 which is regarding the completion and review and in this chapter of completion and review we have the discussion on SA 560, 570 and 580. And 60, 70 and the 80. So chapter number 5, 6 as such put together is your 500 series. Okay. It's your 500 series. Okay. Right. Then after chapter number 6, we have the chapter number 7, which in our book, I have divided it under 7A and 7B. If you look at institute study material, they've kept it as one single chapter, but doesn't make a difference. Right. So chapter 7A, wherein we discuss our 700 series, 700, 701, 7, 705, 706, 710 and 720 and then 7b as I told you we have the discussion on section 143 of the Companies Act and also we have the CARO 2020. How many clauses in CARO? Listen ma'am you are asking such simple questions is institute going to ask such simple questions? No, institute will ask you its own level of questions. Wonderful, right? 21 clauses of the CARO 2020. Do you know clause 7 of CARO? You know clause 7? Yes, what is clause 7? Oh, clause 7 is fraud. That's a fraud. Yes, clause 7, it's regarding the statutory dues whether the company is regular in depositing the undisputed statutory dues and those which are outstanding for a period of more than six months and then disputed statutory dues the amount involved and the forum where the dispute is pending let me try one more clause 15 clause 15 of caro there are 21 clauses right so what is clause 15 of caro Oh, internal audit is clause 14. Clause 15 is, remember, no, no, you don't remember. 
clause 15 non cash transactions yes clause 16 is registration as an nbfc you know, with rbi right but clause 15 is regarding the right non cash transactions whether the company has entered into any non cash transaction with the directors or persons connected therewith then whether it is in compliance with the provisions of section section non cash transaction compliance with section 190 Two of the companies act 2013. Good job. Okay. Right. So that's our chapter number seven. Right. So chapter number one to seven. We've discussed so far. And then eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've already told you. Right. Eight is regarding the coincidentally the 800 series, 800, 805, 810. Right. Then this ninth chapter is the standards on related services. That is 4400, 4410. Right. Then 10 is SRE, standards on review engagement. Right, which is the 2400 and 2410, and then the standards on assurance engagement 3400, 3402, and 3420. Right, so the examination of prospective financial information, then assurance reports on controls at a service organization, and 3420 is assurance engagement to report on the compilation of pro forma financial information PFFI. Right, pro forma financial information included in the prospectus. Right, so if you are starting from our book, you will see that there are two modules, module 1 and module 2. So module 1 has got the chapter number 1 to 11, right, so which is dedicatedly for your standards. Right, dedicatedly. So some standards specifically not there in these chapters is like SA 200, then 210, then 230. But here yeah, we have a passing reference of these standards also. Right, so specifically we see in the chapters that these standards are incorporated, but yes, overall all these standards applicable, they say, you know, application based questions will be asked in CA final. So obviously if application based questions have to be asked, we have to have an understanding of the text of these standards. Right, so that is about our module 1, which is standard loaded, you know, which is the standard loaded. And then after that we have the module Two, in which you have the chapter number 12 to 19. So 12, 13, 14, right, right up to 19, in which we talk about all different types of audit. Like I told you, chapter number 12 is regarding your DA. What is DA? Right, the digital auditing and assurance, right? So wherein they talk about cyber risk, they talk about cyber attack, then they talk about IT dependencies, then they talk about the different types of cyber attack, like phishing, smishing, whaling, spoofing, and all of that, right? Then also they talk about the auto, what you say, the emerging technologies in audit, wherein they say A for artificial intelligence, B for blockchain, C for cryptocurrency, D for data analytics, and so on. Right? So you have so many of these new terminologies over there. Right? So digital auditing and assurance. Right? Then 13 is regarding your group audit. In old syllabus, the same chapter was there with the name of the audit of the consolidated financial statement. So now only the name of the chapter has been changed. Content wise, it is absolutely the same. Right? So it's like old wine, new bottle. Right, so exactly the same content, but instead of calling it as the audit of the consolidated financial statements, now it is referred to as the group audit. Right, then after the group audit chapter, we have the two audits over there in chapter number 14, which is audit of bank and audit of non-bank. What is non-bank? Non-banking financial companies. Right, so audit of the banks and then you have the audit of the NBFCs, right? So non-banking financial companies. Okay, right. Then the chapter number 15, which is again audit. Now, whose audit you do? You do the audit of the PSUs. PSU public sector undertaking, which is the government audit. Who is the hero? Who is the main person who has a role in the audit of the public sector undertaking? Right? Who does the audit? of the public sector undertaking who appoints the auditor in case of government company the c and AG, yes the controller and auditor general of the india so we have the audit of the psus then you have chapter number 16 which is on the internal audit right so earlier this chapter also had the management and operational audit along with it but now that is not there so you only have the internal audit right then the chapter number 17 which is your dd what is dd 
What is DD? Due diligence, correct. Then you have the <clears throat> investigation. And then after the investigation, you have the forensic accounting, right? So three discussions incorporated in one chapter, which is due diligence, investigation, and then the forensic accounting. Right, then chapter number 18, as I told you, it is the ESG and the SDG assurance, right? ESG and SDG assurance. And don't you think after mentioning the name of all these chapters, are we missing something? Right, we talked about chapter number 1 to 11, which is regarding the standards, and then 12, which is digital audit, then group audit, then bank audit, NBFC audit, PSU audit, internal audit, 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 audit. Okay, then due diligence investigation, forensic accounting. Earlier it was forensic audit. Now they say it's forensic accounting, right? Then ESG, SDG assurance, which is also like type of verification. And then 19, exactly. What we are missing is our game changer in the CA final advanced auditing paper, which is the chapter on the professional ethics, right? And the liabilities of the auditor, right? This is going to be the, right? this is one of the most important chapters for you to study in CA final, right? The professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor. Right. So again, then, you know, uh, what is the weightage of these chapters? So I could say like earlier, you know, the weightage of these standards used to be in the range of 20 to 30. But now they have said that standards weightage and the exam is going to be increased to 50 marks. Right. So if I talk about my chapter number 1 to 11, what is the weightage of those chapters? 50 marks. And then after that, the chapter number 12 to 19, I can say in chapter 1 question, and not to annoy anybody. Right. So digital auditing, minimum one question. There could be two also. Right. Then group audit, one question. Right. Then the audit of bank and NBFC, one, one question. Right. Then PSU is like a visiting chapter. It doesn't come in every exam, but you never know in which attempt it will come. Right? So, but whenever it comes, generally one question. You never know with ICI, they might put two. But yeah, generally. Right? Then 16th one, internal audit, again one question. Due diligence, investigations and forensic accounting, it is one to two question. Okay, they ask one question on due diligence, one on investigation, one on forensic accounting. So, out of the three, any two. You know, that type. Then ESG, SDG, let's again keep the prediction as one. And then professional ethics and liabilities of the auditor is two to three questions. Could be on the optimistic side, four questions. Right? So in the theory part and then the MCQ part put together. But you know, by default, the weightage of this chapter is going to be on an average 15 marks. And so even though they ask four questions, you know, three questions of four, four marks each, right? So three questions into four marks each is going to come to 12 marks. And apart from that, in the MCQ, you'll see it a little bit here and there, right? So around 12 to 15 marks is the weightage of this particular chapter. Okay. So did you understand little bit, thoda, thoda, little, little, understood? Are you sitting straight? Do you have a notebook, a textbook in front of you? Are you distracted? You say, ma'am, that is our default mechanism nowadays. Whatever we do on earth, we are distracted. Don't be distracted here. And I don't pamper, don't, you know, underestimate the potential of you. Okay. Right. So be charged up. Take responsibility. Okay. Right. So you're all ready. So now you tell me, I have given you an outline of these 19 chapters, 1 to 19. Can you tell me which one you want me to take it to like a on priority of a chapter, I am going to give you an overview of all the chapters, uh, but which chapter you want me to specifically consider and cover? Okay, standards, take care. That's a standard answer which I always get, okay. New standards, okay, that's nice. 8, 9, 10, 11, take care. Uh, those newly added standards, yes. Anna? Okay, 800-805, okay, standards and digital auditing, okay, new standards, okay, so new standards are on demand, they are on fire like, okay, right, you have a notebook in front of you, everyone, 
and these uh, notes which I make in the class, the scribbling which I do. Anyways, the you know what you say that uh, on the software we'll be uploading the you know encrypted version of these notes. So for your later reference, you can go through it. Anyways, others can't make sense out of it. Only students who've attended the class you know can correlate with these notes over here. Uh, but that does not mean that you're only going to listen to me in the duration of the class. You have to write. There has to be a pen with you. Yes pen uh, is pen in your hand or pencil or highlighter and you have to do the marking because audit you know it's a subject which gets evaporated and at that time you think you've understood that time you think you remember but later on you say Are you person? don't know where it has run away and also that is why for the increasing the retention power and building a better rapport with the subject please 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 do some markings and also take some notes however you know whatever be your handwriting but keep a record okay what question i have referred to what i'm saying is an important question or whatever references i make in the class okay right so every day our class is going to be divided under two parts it's just a matter of six days right so 9 to 11 15 times and then after that 11 30 to 1 30 that is how minimum and you know, on your side i don't know okay but that is minimum of the class right so every day we will be doing a mixture mixture in the context of we'll discuss something from the module one and then we discuss something from the module two Right. So one, we do our special chapters and then we do our standards over there. Right. For you to get the maximum benefit of this class, it is uh, recommended that as you are in the course of attending this particular class, right, as you are in the you know, momentum of attending this particular class, as compared to your regular time schedule, devote more time to the subject of audit right now. You know, devote additional time, more time. Right? So two things you are supposed to do. One, whatever I have discussed in the class today that you need to study, you prepare your notes, you need to look into the question answers and all for the same. So whatever I have introduced or you know whatever chapters we've discussed, you need to do the final, you know, the entire preparation for that. Right? So that is one part you need to do. Okay, Whatever is studied in the class, you, you know, super find that part of your content whatever we've studied and second whatever next we are going to discuss in the class like i'll tell you tomorrow we'll discuss the example i'm giving you that tomorrow we'll discuss the chapter of bank and psu so you know okay tomorrow before i you know before it's nine o'clock in the morning in the rest half of the day yes that is today evening or so you look into those particular chapters you don't know them i know that's the reason you are attending the class but at least you know okay this is all what i don't know and then you look into the entire bank audit chapter. Then you say, oh my God, what is all this? What are they talking about? You know, that realization is very important. So that when the vacuum is created, I can fill the content over there. Right? So that you're not under the wrong impression. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm just listening and then, you know, I'll become CA. Don't worry, you'll anyways become a chartered accountant. It's just a matter of time and effort. Right? So please realize the value of time right realize the value of time realize the you know any one mistake or any one part of the lethargy or the you know uh, what you say unintentional error or intentional error from your side will put you in the majority how you do nine things right and one thing you do wrong you say, ma'am, nine things on earth I did right. No value of the nine things which I did right. And this one thing which I missed out, I did not do cumulative revisions, ma'am, for audit. I did not do the writing practice for audit. And see, ma'am, now I am paying the cost for it. And I did not do the writing practice. I did not see the MTP, RTP suggested. Any one of them, like or many of them you did not do. And you pay the cost for it. And you say, ma'am, we were told since the beginning that right now we need to burn the midnight oil rather than waiting for the month of April or October. And then after that, realizing, oh, yeah, 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 yeah I need to study. It's not that we are, uh, you know, we didn't, uh, you know, we lost time. And uh, the only thing which you lose is time. Rest, everything is there. Right? So what happens? You go in the majority for any one of your mistakes. You know, you get like a one, no, now 193 is history. No, now you get like a 143 out of, uh, you know, what you say, minimum 150, which is required out of 300. So 143 means, are you like a dumb student? Not at all. 
है यू गेट ट्वेंटी थर्टी फोर्टी यू नो टेन टेन मार्क्स इन ईच सब्जेक्ट एंड दैट्स अ मैटर ऑफ ग्रेट कंसर्न बट वन फोर्टी थ्री एंड जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड के फॉर सेवन मार्क्स नाउ यू हैव टू लाइक स्टडी फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स अगेन है ना यू अंडरस्टैंड इज देर एनी वैल्यू ऑफ दी वन फोर्टी थ्री मार्क्स यू गॉट नो दैट इज ऑल द वैल्यू ऑफ दी सेवन मार्क्स इज इट राइट right so what i'm telling you any one mistake you do and you go in the majority why you go in the majority because you know the passing percentage of the ca course what is it on an average 15% right so 15% and 85% which is majority obviously 85% is the majority any one mistake and you go and sit into the majority gang and you go and sit in the gang over there whether it was your mistake whether it was icci mistake whether it was the mistake of your health or time or so mistake is a mistake so what are they controlled uncontrolled intentional unintentional wo jaise fraud and error mein hota hai error of omission error of commission then procedural error and errors of duplication whatever it is or oh, some student is saying 9% okay so i don't want you to make you feel that bad also because you know i said on an average okay so on an average it is like uh, 15% over there okay right so put in the you know the you know the only way for you to uh, gain success is that you just you know believe in the process you believe in the process you don't leave any stone unturned from your search right so it's like roll up your sleeves and you know on the marks get set go and with that let's start with our discussion on the subject right so some student uh, how to present answers during exam yeah yeah i will be talking about that also right so you know any students who uh, prefer hindi uh, what you say uh hindi delivery uh, as a medium of communication in the class but you see that oh ma'am is only speaking in english right so hindi to kya hi na hindi mein sun ke kya karoge you have to write the paper in english and my english is pretty normal okay no ma'am only english okay great right only english okay apart from that i am telling you like you know in a uh, uh yeah i'll speak in english okay right so anyways apart from that one more thing in the class which may happen that like, you know um, you know if you how many of you do uh, some type of uh, strength training right do you do some type of strength training right you do some squats some push ups or something like that or some for so or form of physical exercise like say it could be yoga or something like that Right, so if you have done it after a period of time, or when you are doing it for the first time, do you feel the aches and pains on the first day? You like the whole day, you know, you are feeling that stretching, and then you are not even able to walk and something like that. ऐसा होता है? Does it happen? But you say, oh, that aches and pains will come, so I will never do any type of exercise. No, ha, you can't climb stairs exactly, right? So. you realize that you uh, you know go through that difficulty right if you decide to uh, you know work on yourself if you don't decide then same like a vegetable you continue to exist okay but yeah if you decide to then you will have this aches and pains so today when we are going to start studying the subject of audit the amount of content which i will you know uh, shower upon you during the duration of the class there might be a little bit of an what you say exasperated or a uh, exhausted or a little bit of heaviness which you might experience right so that heaviness if as you know ke okay, what heaviness you experience in the gym that's good for you it's building your strength so same thing you know will happen with the audit class right so don't you know you are under a surgery over there you are you know we are doing a preparation for the subject of audit so it is going to be intense but please don't form any preconceived notions i am here to take care of you i am here just have faith in me i will not certainly do any harm to any one of you but don't form any opinion and be at a loss oh my god i am not able to follow oh my god you know i thought this is how the class is going to be oh my god i don't know whether i should have taken fast track or hey, bhai half of your life you'll spend in you know regretting the decisions which you've made in life so no believe in the process have faith in me 
you understand so each one of you because now see i am uh, teaching to the students in the class all from different different you know uh, uh, backgrounds and different different uh, style of studying and everything so we are just drawing an average right we are just drawing an average over there but certainly in case if you have some concerns regarding any concepts that you've not understood or any topic that you want me to take then you can communicate it to the yes technical team and then they will pass on the message and certainly you can keep on putting it in the chat box also right in the course of the class you know i generally when i right now i've kept the chat box on but now later on i you know minimize the chat box and intermittently in between i'll be checking it why well, because you know otherwise if i keep on looking at the chat box which is the question of a particular student then i lose the momentum you know of my discussion in the class so that does not mean that your question will not be addressed right so don't become impatient that oh my god i've put a message and she is not even answering so i'll answer and if i don't answer put it again i and generally your questions get answered as we further get into our discussion in the class right so you see oh this question came in my mind that means you are a good student you have a good thought process you anticipated this and then when it, when it, if it gets addressed in the further part of the discussion great if it doesn't then you put it again theek hai all good right at least 100 pages of the book should be filled in the duration of this class right so how many hours will you dedicate to audit after the class four hours in the classroom and uh, eight hours of self study or at least four hours right you will do writing practice you will prepare your notes you will read each and every questions which is there in the study material or whichever book you are referring to in detail okay right so today it being day 1 i want to lay down a base for our discussion of the subject in every class of mine i say this and i have not found a better example unless and until you guys uh, prompt me with another idea it's like you know if i want to watch cricket and i want to enjoy watching the game of cricket i have to know the terms related to cricket so like you know if i don't know what is meant by an over normally over means what over khatam ho gaya but cricket mein over is six balls right then there is something called as you know boundary now normally boundary we talk about the boundary of our country we talk about the boundary of you know some lakshman rekha that time but your boundary is the cricket stadium boundary wherein you know that means it's a four run over there then there is something called as lbw we have to know what does an lbw stand for we have to know what is a golden duck what is a maiden over and all of that you know hat trick and power play and you know drs and all of that only then we can appreciate and you know develop our liking towards the game of cricket if we don't know these terms we will be like hey, what they are saying drs what they are saying over i don't know what is over and that way so you can't you know you have to know the terminology so similarly just as in cricket or for that matter any other sport you have to know the terminology in audit also we have to know the terminology like the important terminology in audit that we have one is our afrf any guess for what is afrf yes any guess then we have saae right then we have the reasonable assurance then a reasonable assurance then we have something called as t c w g i t c w g then we have something called as d s r then the n t e right applicable financial reporting framework wonderful sufficient appropriate audit evidence reasonable assurance those charged with governance power control okay dsr direction supervision and review nature timing and extent of the audit procedures and the nature timing and extent then we talk about audit risk right we talk about ir cr and dr right inherent risk control risk and the detection risk right then after that we also talk about the rmm oh my god how can i forget this fellow and the risk of material misstatement okay risk of material misstatement now in the class obviously right now i'll discuss these terms with you but in the class or in our textbook also you will see that we've written afrf saa etc wg and so in the exams you are not supposed to use the short form no writing fs you have to write down financial statements right so make it a thumb rule 
है ना कि दो इन द क्लास वी कीप ऑन सेइंग एस ए ए ई व्हेन इट कम्स टू द एग्जाम हॉल यू विल राइट सफिशिएंट अप्रोप्रिएट ऑडिट एविडेंस यू से मैम डोंट वरी वी विल राइट द फुल फॉर्म बिकॉज़ एनीवेज वी हैव लेस कंटेंट टू राइट एंड मोर आल्सो व्हाटएवर वी नो एस ए ए ई दैट आल्सो इफ यू वी राइट इट एज अ शॉर्ट फॉर्म इट विल फर्दर रिड्यूस द कंटेंट वी हैव फॉर राइटिंग इन द एग्जाम but yeah as a general question i'm telling you over here that no using any sort of short forms in the exam right so like in the class when we talk about chartered accountants act right we say ca act but in the exam you have to write down the chartered accountants act 1949 When the Chartered Accountants Act, nineteen forty nine, a CA. You don't say a CA. You say a Chartered Accountant in practice. A Chartered Accountant. Okay. Right. So now what we will be doing right away is having a discussion of this terminology and then proceeding further with our discussion. Okay. Right. So now let's come to the first one. Right. So if you look into the standards, I want all of you to make this particular page. right make this particular page wherein you know you have the standards in the 200 300 to 400 500 series 600 700 and then 800 series 2000 series 3000 series 4000 series and then after that one standard you have is the sqc and you have the s Q C right so S Q C we have only one S Q C one you know the institute they've already issued the draft of S Q M because they say now later on it will not be quality control it will be quality management it says you can't control the quality you have to manage the quality right so but right now this is only under the exposure draft but later on at a future point of time the new standards will be applicable but right now we have the sqc 1 which is applicable for your exams right we have the sqc 1 which is applicable in your chapter number 1 right then 200 series we have 200 210 220 30 40 50 60 70 80 65 and 299 right so overall objectives of the yes everyone of the independent auditor and the conduct of an audit in accordance with the standards on auditing sa 210 engagement letter agreeing the terms of audit engagement 220 a replica of saqc1 its quality control for an audit of financial statements 230 अरे मेरे को सुनाई नहीं दे रहा है आई एम नॉट एबल टू हियर से एस ए 230 ऑडिट डॉक्यूमेंटेशन एस ए 240 द ऑडिटर्स रिस्पांसिबिलिटीज रिलेटिंग टू फ्रॉड इन द ऑडिट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स 250 कंसीडरेशन ऑफ लॉज एंड रेगुलेशंस इन द ऑडिट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स 260 कम्युनिकेशन विद दोस चार्ज्ड विद गवर्नेंस 265 कम्युनिकेटिंग deficiency is an internal control to those charged with governance and management 299 joint audit of the financial statements great then 300 okay please uh, mute yourself okay right then you have the 300 400 series in which you have the sa 300 planning and audit of the financial statements beautiful sa 315 identifying and assessing the risk of material misstatement through understanding the entity and its environment 320 materiality in planning and performing an audit 330 the auditor's responses to assess risk 402 audit considerations relating to an entity using a service organization and 450 evaluation of mis statements identified during the audit right then we have sa 500 audit evidence 501 audit evidence specific consideration for selected items 505 505 external confirmations 510 initial audit engagements opening balances 520 analytical procedures 530 audit sampling 540 auditing of accounting estimates including the fair value accounting estimates and related disclosures 
related parties 560 subsequent events 570 going concern and 580 written representation wonderful 600 using the work of another auditor 610 using the work of internal auditors and 620 using the work of an auditor's expert 700 forming an opinion and reporting on financial statements 701 communicating communicating key audit matters in the independent auditors report 705 modifications to the opinion in the independent auditors report 706 emphasis of matter paragraph and and other matter paragraph in the independent auditors report and then 710 720 710 comparative information corresponding figures and comparative financial statements and 720 the auditors responsibilities relating to other information wonderful 800 you have essay 800 805 and 810 and 800 special considerations audits of financial statements prepared in accordance with special purpose framework SA 805 special considerations audits of single financial statement specific element account or item of the financial statement and 810 engagements to report on summary financial statements then 2400 engagements to review historical financial statements and 2410 review of interim financial information performed by an independent auditor of the NTT. right then 3400 examination of prospective financial information 3402 Assurance reports on controls at a service organization and then 3420 assurance engagement to report on the compilation of pro forma financial information included in the prospectus and then 4400 engagements to perform agreed upon procedures regarding financial information and 4410 is your compilation engagement and then SQC1 quality control for firms that perform audits and reviews of historical financial information and other assurance and related services engagement right so today's uh, what you say a challenge for all of you or today's a task given to all of you no challenge okay a task given to all of you is that you have to try to remember the title of these 46 standards write it 10 times write it 20 times say it 100 times do the needful do whatever is required but you have to ensure that this is done right you have to ensure that this is done okay right so with that you know now that i told you what are the important terms and then after that i told you okay this is the layout of the standards that we shall be discussing let's come to essay 200 everybody please sit straight pay attention all ears over your okay essay 200 and what is the title of essay 200 overall objectives please keep writing with me okay of the independent auditor at least write 10 percent of what i'm writing right overall objectives of the independent auditor and the conduct of an audit in accordance with the standards on auditing right sit straight right in accordance with the Standards on auditing, ting, ting, standards on auditing. Right, so now overall objectives. Okay, you are appointed as an auditor, right, of a company. And now of a company of any entity. Now what is your overall objective as an auditor? Right, so the overall objective of the auditor as laid down in SA 200 is to do what? Is to obtain, prapt karna, hassle karna, to get. Get what? Reasonable assurance. Reasonable. You know, reasonable. So not high, not low, but reasonable assurance. What? Okay, these financial statements which are being audited by the auditor, okay, they are free from much 
material misstatement. Wonderful. What a beauty in the terms. Right? Material misstatement, whether due to fraud or whether due to error. And fraud or error to obtain reasonable assurance. What? That the financial statements are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. Thereby, once you get that reasonable assurance, thereby enabling the auditor to express an opinion. What opinion? That the financial statements have been prepared by whom? By the management. How? In accordance with an applicable financial reporting framework and then to report what the findings of the auditor. How do you report the findings? In accordance with the standards on auditing. Right? You cannot give a report as you wish. Internal audit report, there is no fixed format. But yes, statutory audit report, we have a certain format of the report given in SA, 2, uh, SA 700. Right, so now let's try to analyze this definition over here. Right, you know, we cannot, you know, you want to construct a 200 floor ka building. You say, ma'am, I want to do big things in life. I want to construct a, you know, 200 floor building. So no problem, you construct that building. But whether you want to construct a 1 floor, 2 floor, 10 floor, 20 floor or a 200 floor building, you will have to first lay down the foundation. And rather the more bigger the building you want to make, the bigger, the stronger your foundation has to be. Like so you say, no, no, ma'am, I want to discuss more high tech, high funda stuff in audit. No problem, we will come to that discussion. But for that, we have to lay down our base correct. You don't know the base and you're talking big, big things. Not right. Okay. Right. So to obtain reasonable assurance. How has SA 200 defined reasonable assurance as? It says reasonable assurance is a. Are, everybody at home should say that today this person is talking to whom? Continuously talking in front of the computer. Ah, reasonable assurance that. Financial, if what is reasonable assurance? It is a correct, it's a high level of assurance. It is a high level of assurance, but not an absolute assurance. Why not an absolute assurance? Due to the correct inherent limitations of an audit. Yes, inherent limitations of an audit. And what is the most important inherent limitation we have? That the evidence obtained by the auditor is persuasive and not conclusive in nature. Persuasive, persuade, to convince, most likely to be true. And conclusive, only that is true. We don't get conclusive evidence. Had we got conclusive evidence, we could have given an absolute assurance. But the evidence which we get is a persuasive evidence. That is why we give the reasonable assurance, which is a high level of the assurance. Right? So reasonable assurance. So like 98, 99, 90 plus high level, but not 100%. No, no, why not 100% due to the inherent limitations of an audit? Okay, there is some by default limitations of our audit process. What are the inherent limitations of an audit? It says NNOT. Right? What is NNOT? One N stands for the nature of financial reporting. And okay, preparation of financial statements involves a lot of judgment by the management. One company decides that our laptop, we will depreciate it in five years. Another company decides we will depreciate it in three years. Right? So, you know, one company says we will use FIFO. Another says we will use weighted average. So, nature of financial reporting itself, there is a lot of management judgment. There is no one hard and fast rule regarding how the financial statements can be prepared. See, like 2 plus 2 is going to be 4 forever. But what accounting policy a company follows, it's not going to be same forever. They can keep on changing their accounting policy. So it's a judgment of the management. Second, as an auditor, what does it say? It's an inherent limitation due to the nature of audit procedure. Why? Because the procedure which auditor is going to perform while doing the audit, what does it say? Those procedures are not an investigation. We say, no, audit is not an investigation. It is not looking into alleged wrongdoing. 
right you are not an expert in the authentication of documents right what does it say again fraud is more difficult to detect than an error right as an auditor you don't have the power of search management may have given the incomplete information to the auditor so client gave me the ppe register property plant equipment register and i did my audit on that register who knew on earth that this register itself is wrong you know so management gives me wrong information i end up doing the right audit procedure also on the wrong information you understand that so that's the nature of the audit procedure ke okay, audit is not an investigation auditor is not an expert auditor does not have the power of search then information may be incorrect in accurate or so right which is provided by the management then we have some other limitations of the audit like you know in an audit checking for the fraud it's very difficult okay, whether fraud has taken place or no then whether all lnr what is lnr laws and regulations have they been complied with then whether related party transactions have they been identified are they arms length to check that it says it's very difficult then to check the entity's ability to continue as the going concern it says it's difficult we are not saying we are not going to do that but how much ever we check that there is an inherent limitation you know you cannot say oh yeah yeah 100% i am telling you this company is a going concern or not a going concern it doesn't work 100% right so those are the other limitations and the last one is the timeliness of the financial reporting and the balance between the benefit and the cost right so you have to like 365 days of accounting and 20 days of audit so within 20 days you have to do the audit and issue the audit report and obviously if a client is going to give you a fee of 20 lakh so you have to keep a balance between the benefit and the cost also right so these are the inherent limitations of an audit one from the management side the nature of financial reporting itself there is a lot of judgment involved then audit procedures also there are limitations then there are the other limitations and then you have the timeliness okay so reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement and right? now look at this wonderful term free from material misstatement hai na free from material misstatement hai na misstatement could be intentional or it could be unintentional it could be fraud or it could be error whatever it be it is a misstatement wrong hai to hai if it is incorrect it is incorrect like valuation of inventory pay attention everyone done by the client is 120 crore you ask client client what is the value of your your inventory they said 120 crore as an auditor you did the audit you check the inventory valuation and you saying what you are saying 120 crore your inventory only 80 crore value so what is 120 crore what should be 80 crore difference between the two 40 crore is a misstatement hai na what is schedule 3 disclosures not given what should be schedule 3 disclosure should be given what is contingent liability is not disclosed what should be contingent liability should be disclosed whenever there is a difference between what is and what should be that is a misstatement now say i am doing the audit and i need to determine materiality which we will discuss in sa 320 say as an auditor i have determined materiality example to be 30 crore so now this 40 crore is going to be a material misstatement it is the material difference between what is and what should be because it's exceeding materiality you know material fraud or error say materiality was 100 crore then you say ah this is immaterial i ignore it no just ignore okay and now what we are saying free from material misstatement see understand misstatement difference between what is and what should be material misstatement material difference between what is and what should be and free from material misstatement means there is no material difference between what is and what should be that means there is no material fraud or error immaterial there might be but there is no material fraud or error 
है ना नो मटीरियल मिस स्टेटमेंट एंड रिगार्डिंग दिस ऑडिटर यू हैव टू ऑप्टेन अ रीजनेबल अश्योरेंस कि दीज फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट लाइक से ऑफ रिलायंस इंडस्ट्रीज आई जस्ट ओपन एंड कैप दी रिलायंस इंडस्ट्रीज राइट सो दिस इज दी ऑडिट रिपोर्ट दैट यू सी ओवर देर राइट ऑडिट और गिविंग ट्रू एंड फेयर व्यू right then after that you have the ifc reporting and then the caro reporting and then after these reporting you have the financial statements what does it say balance sheet after balance sheet you have the statement of profit and loss then the statement of changes in equity then the statement of cash flow and then the notes and the summary of the significant accounting policies and other explanatory information right so what is the objective of the auditor is to obtain the reasonable assurance that these financial statements which are being audited by the auditor are free from material misstatement whether due to fraud or error and once auditor you get that reasonable assurance then you express an opinion saying what ke yes these financial statements like in case of reliance over here right that these financial statements have been prepared by the management as per an afrf right so let's come to the next big term over there which is a f r f pay attention everyone right applicable financial reporting framework and right? you know frame no photo frames you know spectacal frame right so it's a frame and now what does it say this frame which you apply the framework it has to be the framework which is allowed as per the laws and regulation right so applicable financial reporting framework means the framework that means the laws and regulations which are to be followed by the management because preparation of financial statements whose responsibility management in the preparation of financial statements right so framework to be applied while doing financial reporting financial reporting is what accounting right so framework that means the laws and regulations which are to be followed by the management in the preparation of the financial statements right so management when you prepare the balance sheet profit and loss cash flow statement statement of changes in equity notes you have to prepare it as per the laws and regulations right so what is that that is the applicable financial reporting framework right applicable financial reporting framework the framework everybody please say the framework which is to be applied while doing the financial reporting right the framework the laws and regulation like example it's a company listed on the stock exchange bsc nsc so obviously it has to prepare its financial statements as per the ndas and the schedule 3 and that's the afrf say the company is listed on the us stock exchange it's listed on the nasdaq so now to submit to the us stock exchange authority the company will prepare financial statements as per us cap say the financial statements have been prepared to meet the provisions of a contract right so now the financial statements are prepared so you entered into a contract and the terms and conditions of the contract say that this is how you need to prepare your financial statements so now the financial statements are being prepared as per the provisions of a contract or say you have taken a loan from the bank and the bankers say that you need to submit your financial statements as per the format provided by the bank or the company has the creditors and the creditors say we want the details okay why the company is not paying us we want the details of the receipts and disbursements of the company right so this is the afr the laws and regulations which are to be followed while preparing the financial statements and the laws and regulation now if it is in the schedule 3 or us gap so these are examples i have given you over here of the applicable financial reporting framework now in ts financial statements are prepared for a common general yes whereas us gap is prepared for a special purpose provisions of a contract again prepared for a specific set of users bank only prepared for the bankers receipts and disbursement only prepared for the creditors are you getting so these four are examples of special purpose framework 
for a specific set of users, not for a broad range of users. And this special purpose framework is what is discussed in essay 800. What is the title? Listen, everybody. What is the title of essay 800? It says special considerations. Yes, chapter number 8, you have this particular essay 800 over there. It says special considerations, audits of financial statements prepared in accordance with special purpose framework. That means applicable financial reporting framework could be a general purpose framework or it could be a special purpose framework. If it is for a wide range of the common and a broad range of users, then it is general purpose framework. But if it is for a a specific set of users for a specific purpose, then it is the special purpose framework. Right? So, special purpose framework is what is discussed in SA 800. And general purpose framework are normal, SA 210700, normal auditing standards. But if it is special purpose framework, then you will follow 210, you will follow 700. But additionally, because it is special purpose framework, you will also have to follow the requirements of SA 800. So, you know, financial statements are prepared as per Indian GAAP, Indian accounting standards. I don't need to follow SA 800. But if it is like US GAAP or provisions of a contract or some credit or banker, then we additionally also need to follow the requirements of SA 800. Yes. Now, if financial statements are prepared as per India Schedule 3, then we can express an opinion saying true and fair. US GAAP also, we can express an opinion that they are prepared, giving a true and fair view. But the provisions of a contract, bank format, requirement of the creditor, for them you cannot express an opinion saying true and fair. So, here we will express an opinion saying prepared. Okay, these financial statements have been prepared by the management in accordance with a right, special purpose framework, in accordance with the provisions of a contract, bank format or so. Right, so that's a prepared. Okay, listen to me. We'll consolidate all what I'm saying. So one, when you are accepting the engagement, separately you need to check whether the AFRF, is it a GPF or an SPF. General purpose framework and yes, special purpose framework. Hai. How is that decided? If it is for a specific set of users, special purpose. If it is for a broad range, common users, then it is general purpose framework. Part one, story over. Second, now auditor, when you have to express an opinion, a report dena padega. So now when you have to express an opinion, you have to check is it a compliance framework or is it a fair presentation framework, right? Compliance framework or the fair presentation framework. If it is a compliance framework, the standard says that auditor, you need to express an opinion saying prepared. Okay, these financial statements are prepared as per the requirement of the bank. They are prepared. But fair presentation framework, you express an opinion saying that these financial statements give a true and fair view or there is another alternative present fairly. But what we very commonly see is what is used as true and fair. So simple, whenever you say prepared, that is compliance framework as such. And then when you say true and fair, that means it's a fair presentation framework, right? Fair presentation framework, okay? Right. So, please listen to one last point I am saying over here. Okay, these five examples of the framework which I have given to you over here. Right? These five examples, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Are all of these compliance? Are all of these compliance framework as such? Yes. But in addition to compliance, in situation number one and two, Okay, is there a compliance with the requirement, like say, of the Indian gap in days and schedule 3? Yes. Or is there a compliance with the requirement of the terms of the contract? Yes. Know, that is there. 
right in both the cases but now so is this compliance over here yes but now in case of in day schedule 3 in addition to the compliance of the requirements of the framework we also additionally do some plus or minus what is the plus or minus that we give some disclosure beyond those required by the AFRF or in extremely rare circumstances you depart from the requirements of the SS, of the AFRF you know, depart from the requirement of the AFRF okay you have complied in the schedule 3 comply kiya. but in addition to that you are giving disclosures beyond those required by the framework or in extremely rare circumstances you are removing some disclosure so now this add or less why you are doing that in order to achieve a fair presentation why you are doing this add less to achieve a fair presentation you are in the contract am i going to do any add less no i'm not going to do any add less in the contract do whatever contract is said simple prepare as per the contract but here what i do in addition to the framework we either add or we less then that compliance framework becomes the fair presentation framework right and once there is that add less then we express an opinion saying true and fair and if there is no add less then we simply express an opinion saying prepared okay like right let me just come to this one particular you know we have a chapter zero in which we have the a list of the 46 uh, standards given in a yes, sequence over there and then after that I have given some important terms over there like you know applicable financial reporting framework it says it is the framework which is adopted by the management TCWG in the preparation of financial statements that is acceptable as required by law regulation so as required by law and regulation but now what you do if it is a fair presentation framework in addition to the requirement of the complying with the requirements of that framework you give disclosure beyond those required by the framework or in extremely rare circumstances you depart from the requirement so that's what i told you you add or extremely rare circumstances you list so there is compliance with law regulation in addition to that you do add or list then it becomes a fair presentation framework but if you don't do this add or less then it says if it's only in compliance with the law regulation then it is called as a compliance framework the term compliance framework is used to refer to a financial reporting framework that requires compliance with the requirement of the framework but does not contain the acknowledgement in one or two above so ye add less nahi hai. Right? So, you are simply just complying with the requirement of the laws and regulations. Then that is a compliance framework. But in addition to the compliance of the law regulation, you are also doing the add or less. Then it becomes a fair presentation framework. Right? So, don't mix these two. When you accept the engagement, you have to check is it GPF or SPF. If it is SPF, in addition to your normal auditing standards, you additionally have to follow the requirements of SA 800 also. And then when you are forming an opinion, right, you have to check is it compliance or is it the fair presentation framework. Right? So, if it is, has got add or less, then it is fair presentation if it is only in compliance with the requirement of law then it is a compliance framework right then it is a compliance framework okay right so to obtain reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement whether due to fraud or error and then auditor express an opinion what opinion auditor can express either say prepared or say true and fair Right? So, if it is as per the, you know, like contract or creditor, then you say prepare. But if it is Indian gap, US gap, then you can say true and fair. Right? No, true and fair. And then auditor, you report your findings in accordance with the standards on audit. Right? You report your findings. Right? So, this is the overall objective of the auditor. Okay, when you are going for the statutory audit, when you are going for a financial statement audit, what is it that you want to achieve? This is your objective. 
Okay, right. This is the objective. And then what does it say? This objective is of who? It is of the independent auditor. Another very important concept in our audit. Right. So it keeps on coming in different different chapters and discussion. The independence of the auditor. Right. What is independence? That the judgment of a person is not subordinate to the wishes or directions of another who might have engaged him or for his own self-interest. You say, oh my God, if I give qualified opinion, client will next year not appoint me. So just to please my client, let me give an unmodified opinion. Then you are not independent. Or client is saying, see, then if you qualify our report. So you are, you know, too much in favor of the client. Right? So again, you are not independent. Right? So when you subordinate your decision making, when you come under the words of others and then form your opinion, then you are not independent as an auditor. Right? Whereas independence is the keystone. Okay? Audit report ko itna value kyu hai? Okay, when auditor say true and fair, the world believes in it. It is they know that the auditor is independent, that he has not subordinated his decision making to the wishes or directions of another person. He formed an independent opinion. Right? Like say 10 people are eating the food and then now everybody wants to form their opinion regarding the food that they are eating and you know that there is no salt in the food. Okay, but just nine people, maybe they are scared or maybe they don't want to disappoint the person who's made the food. Nobody is saying that there is no salt in the food. So you say, oh my God, nobody is telling, why should I say? Even I will say, no, no, food is very tasty, very good. Then you are subordinating your decision making. You are coming under the pressure, you are coming under the influence or something and then you are forming your opinion. Had it been an independent opinion, you would have clearly said, you, oh, there, I think there is some, you know, uh, something wrong or I don't know what is it. Like, can we check it once? You understand? So you have to be independent in forming your opinion. Right? So independence of the auditor. So like, you know, you see a particular movie and everybody is talking about that movie or that series on Netflix or some OTT over there. And everybody is like, you know, rave and ranting about it. Oh my God, what a performance. Oh my God, what a plot, what a series, what an acting. And you are like, okay, you say, oh, so many people are talking about it. Let me also see. And you start seeing it and 10 minutes after that, you're like, seriously, this is what people have been liking? But now you want to fit into the race. No? So you say, oh yeah, even I watched, it's too good. So no, you're not independent in forming your opinion. You understand? Right. So independence of the auditor. Right. So this independence of the auditor not only should be in the mind, but it also should be in the appearance. Okay, you say, no, no, I am independent. So as per your mind, you are independent. But it says, it's, you know, as you think that you are independent, that means you are, yes, you think that you are independent. But what does it say? You should not only be, but you should also appear to be independent. Best example for me to explain this is study. You say, yes, ma'am, I am studying. Yes, ma'am. So as per your mind, you are studying. I ask your family members, I ask your friend and they're like, who is that? Who is studying? What, ma'am? What rumors you are spreading? Never seen this person ever open a book. But you in your mind, you are thinking that I am doing a great work. You know, but does it appear to be? No. So what does it say? What the code of ethics requires is independence not only of the mind, but independence also of the appearance. That you should be and you should appear to be. Now, whom should I appear to be independent? Whom should I appear to be? So here they have introduced a concept of the RITP. Does everybody know what is RITP? Yes, what is RITP test that they are talking about over there? A reasonable and informed third party test. Okay, you know, you are saying, ma'am, I am independent. Okay, agree. That is as per your mind. But if I ask a reasonable and informed third party, okay, what do you think about this auditor? Do you think he is independent? So they say, yeah, yeah, he appears to be independent. So then it is independence in appearance also. Right? So reasonable and informed third party, it may be within your form, it may be outside your form. It may be a CA, it may be a non-CA, but it is a reasonable and informed third party. Okay, they say, yeah, yeah, even I would have been in your situation, even I would have taken this decision. Then it is appears to be independent. 
right so code of ethics requires not only the independence of the mind but also the independence of the appearance right both type of independence is required okay and they use a very strong term over there wherein they say independence of the auditor is not negotiable is a man little bit you know they say oh, you know uh, no no i you know, cheat day that type oh, ma'am i'll not purchase share but just two days let me allow me to purchase share ma'am just two rupees or something like that no independence of the auditor is non negotiable right it is a pre essential for the auditor performing the engagements okay so now as an auditor sqc1 pay attention everyone sa220 says that auditor whenever you have to do an audit you or any engagement you have to comply with the ethical requirements including the independence what are the ethical requirements do you all know yes what are the ethical requirements five ethical requirements correct integrity straight forward honest and sincere objectivity no compromising your opinion then pcdc who is pcdc professional competence and due care then confidentiality not to disclose the secrets of the client and then last one is the professional behavior right professional behavior and in addition to these ethical requirement you also have to comply with the requirement of independence not only of the mind but also the independence of the appearance so as per sqc1 sa220 as per sqc1 pay attention everyone sa220 there has to be policies and procedures in the ca form to identify yes anybody are you going to tell me the term okay i have to see that this auditor this uncle who is doing the audit is this uncle independent so there should be policies and procedures in the form to identify whether there is any whether there is any yes who is giving me the answer policies and procedure okay 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 good na 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 yes who will tell me policies and procedures in the form to identify whether there is any yes factors affecting independence can you replace it with one word oh, wrong nahi re wrong we'll come to that yes ha correct policies and procedures in the form to identify whether there is any whether there is any threats to the independence of the auditor any you know danger any what you say what you say some type of a alert ki oh this you know there are concerns regarding the independence of the auditor so whenever i talk about the term independence the next term hitting your mind has to be threats okay there should be policies and procedures in the form to identify whether there are any threats to the independence of the auditor if threats have been identified then there should be policies and procedures in the form in order to either reduce those threats or eliminate those threats right how do you reduce the threat by putting the safeguards then a safeguards or you eliminate you say no ma'am i am not able to reduce the threat we are not able to eliminate the threat then what you do bye bye you withdraw from the engagement and if you have not yet accepted the engagement please don't accept the engagement as i told you independence of the auditor is non negotiable right so remember these three points what should say policies and procedures to identify whether there is any threat if threat is identified now next you need to take steps to reduce or eliminate yes you try to reduce it by putting the safeguard you know by putting rotating the members of engagement team by you know then after that put uh, you are having a eqcr of the audit done engagement quality control review so that is how you try to put the safeguard but you think even after putting the safeguard we are not able to reduce or we are not able to eliminate the threat then now what you need to do you need to withdraw if you already started with the engagement and if you have not yet accepted please don't accept the engagement 
right please don't accept the engagement okay so now whenever wherever we talk about independence this is the backup of what you can incorporate in your discussion and this is like the general content of wherever we have a discussion regarding independence okay now when you talk about the threats you know when you talk about the threats there are five types of the threats to the independence of the auditor right five types of threats what are those five types of the threats to the independence sorry of the auditor f s s a i what does the f stand for the familiarity threat i know like companies act why did it introduce the concept of the rotation of the company auditor because of the familiarity threat because 30 year 40 year same audit firm doing the audit it says now listed entity one firm cannot do the and some classes of company it says same firm cannot do the audit for more than 10 years after that there has to be a pooling period of five years right familiarity threat then you have the self-interest threat self-interest threat i'm having a business relationship with the client if total receipts of my firm is 10 crore, out of that 9 crore I get from this one client. So this one client I lose and my revenue of firm comes down to 1 crore. So it's in my own interest that I never want to, you know, annoy this client. Right? So that's a self-interest threat. Then self-review threat where maker-checker concept is getting violated. That I am only, what you say, prepared the books of account of the client and now I am only auditing them. Right? For the self-review threat, that is why we have section 144, auditor not to render certain services, accounting and bookkeeping, internal audit, design and implementation of financial information system, outsourced financial services. It's a statutory auditor not to do all of this. Why? Because it's a self-review threat. Maker checker will get violated. Right. Then you have the advocacy threat. Advocacy threat? Yes, advocacy threat threats that means you are you know in favor of the client you are promoting the shares of the company oh you know geo limited you should invest in it oh you know this company they never fight with anybody so advocating you are in favor obviously then how can you can be independent and last one is intimidation threat intimidation client is intimidating like you know threatening you so it's like a threatening threat they're saying, CCA, you modify report. Next year, we remove you as the auditor. CCA, nowadays we are seeing, you know, you're doing too much checking. Next year, no, we'll reduce your audit fee. And next year, no, we'll not allow you to check our inventory. You're doing too much checking. So they are inappropriately limiting the scope of your work. But they are threatening. They think we'll see and we'll sue you. And no, we'll file a litigation against you. So CCA says, oh, don't, yeah, don't file a case against me. So, you know, they are like threatening the CA. And that is why CEO says, okay, no, no, no problem. Whatever you say, whatever you say. No, these are the types of the threats to the independence of the auditor. Familiarity threat, self-interest threat, self-review threat, advocacy threat and the intimidation threat. More discussion for this, you will find it in the chapter number 19, which is for the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor. Right. So, one, you have to identify the threat, right? So, you identify any of these threats. You know, like you identify, oh, that the same manager is doing this assignment for last seven years. So, then SQC1 also says, no, that the senior engagement, the engagement partner and senior most engagement team members should be rotated after a period of seven years and not more than seven years, right? So, what you are doing, you're trying to eliminate, you're trying to reduce that threat. Right? And you say, no, I'm not able to reduce, not able to eliminate. Then you need to withdraw or you need to not accept the engagement. Right? Everybody, have you understood the independent auditor discussion? Right? So, we discussed overall objectives and then the independent auditor. Right? The independence of the auditor. Then SA 200 says that auditor, whenever you want to achieve your overall objective, you need to comply with the ethical requirements including independence right which i just discussed with you then it says auditor throughout the course of audit you need to maintain an attitude of professional skepticism an attitude that includes a 
question mark you know? there has to be a question mark on the face of the ca always why what when how come why this why not that questioning mind not to accept anything blindly you know? a curious mind you know? very very curious right to know to get into the substance of the transaction and not the only the form of the transaction right so being alert to condition like you know last year traveling expenses 70 lakh this year traveling expense 72 lakh okay last year traveling expense 70 lakh this year 8 crore and you think oh my they might have done more travel let them travel no what goes for me and your auditor where is your rationality where is your alert mind and okay last year 2025 traveling expenses 70 lakh 2026 traveling expenses 8 crore don't you think that you're not saying that there is a fraud but don't you think that there is now a chance of fraud and error in the traveling expenses chance of fraud and error is what we call it as risk of material misstatement and how will you come to know that when you are alert and what you came to know when you went for the audit that this year the cashier of the company all of a sudden ran away. You know, just he was working in office and one fine day he stopped coming to office. No notice, no trace, no, no whereabouts and known after that. And the auditor, will you not be alert that why did this fellow run away all of a sudden? You say let him run, no? let him do whatever he want. No, as an auditor you have to consider these, no? you have to be alert. Because you go for the audit, client is not going to tell you, my dear CA, these are our financial statements and this is the list of fraud and error. Please put this in your report. Is that type of a VIP luxurious treatment you're going to get? Are they going to say, hey, see, CA, these are the financial statements. This is list of fraud and error. Kindly put this in your report and modify your opinion. No, they will always try to show. Right? They will always try to show clean. Okay, no, see, it, true and fair, everything is okay. You go to the doctor. Doctor asks, have you been taking medicines? You have not been taking the medicines. You have not been doing the exercise. You have not been following the diet. But now what you tell to the doctor? Yeah, yeah, doctor, everything going on. Yeah, yeah, very particular. Yes, yes, doing meditation every day. Now then doctor, you know, indirectly ask some questions. Okay, say that, that medicine, after that, did you feel... Uh, you know that medicine did it have a sweet taste so then you say yeah yeah very sweet very sweet that medicine was doctor says it is the most bitter medicine on earth well, you are saying that this is like a sweet medicine the doctor comes to know that you've not eaten it right so as an auditor you ask company related party transaction all okay they say yeah yeah everything fine you know related we treat them like unrelated only so auditor says, oh, is it, is it, okay. So tell me this laptop, how much you purchase from related party? They say 2 crore. So they say, which laptop or not comes for 2 crore rupees? So that's professional skepticism. Being alert to condition. Whether client is taking you for a ride, making fool out of you, telling you some information and you think, oh, you know, is it 2 crore laptop? Oh, very nice. Oh, let me, I want to do physical verification. Are you, what physical verification? Where is your rationality? Ke, which laptop of 2 crore exists? Right? So that's professional skepticism. Then it says auditor throughout the course of audit you need to exercise professional judgment. That means you need to have the informed decision making. That means decision making which is backed by logic. And informed decision making. Okay, you decided ma'am I have decided I will check 20 samples. You say ma'am I have decided that I will do inspection as an audit procedure for checking a particular area. Or you say ma'am I have decided to take materiality as 30 crore. Or I have decided to issue qualified opinion. How did you decide that? What was the logic behind your decision? Can you give me the justification? That is why we are checking 20. That is why we are doing inspection. That is why materiality is 30. That is why we are issuing qualified opinion. Then it's not only a judgment. It's a professional judgment. It's a judgment which is backed by logic. You have an explanation. You have a working note behind the judgment which is being used. Right? You have the working in your mind and also in your documentation. Right. Next important term is everybody please pay attention of SA 200 is the sufficient appropriate audit evidence. Oh wow, super. And a sufficient appropriate audit evidence, right? Sufficiency refers to, quickly tell me, 
audit evidence how it should be audit evidence it should be sufficient and appropriate what do you mean by sufficiency it means the correct what do you mean by sufficiency it is the quantity of audit evidence and appropriateness refers to the quality i know so quantity means it's your sample size you know your number of samples and quality means is the evidence which you obtain all the supporting all the explanation which you obtain right so how your evidence should be sufficient and appropriate and when would you say it is appropriate when it is relevant and it is reliable right relevance relevance and reliability what is relevance there has to be a logical connection what do you mean by logical connection that i want to check the valuation of the building i am ca auditor of a company and i want to check the valuation of the building i say client i want to check valuation of building they say okay ca take this title deed now how would title deed be relevant for checking the valuation of the building no title deed is relevant for checking the ownership of the building the rights and obligation of the building whereas when i want to check the valuation of the building the valuation report is going to be relevant and so it has there has to be a logical connection it does not mean i don't need the title deed i want the title deed but that i need it when i want to check the ownership the rights and obligation right now when i want to check the valuation you need to give me the valuation report right so that means it has to be relevant and then it has to be reliable which you know that written evidence is more reliable than the oral evidence in a documentary form then evidence obtained from external sources is more reliable than evidence obtained internally then what we say original documents are more reliable than photocopies right then we say evidence obtained from independent sources more reliable and when internal controls in the organization are affected even internal evidence is more reliable right so that is relevant and reliable ke bharose mand hona chahiye relevant hona chahiye and at the same time the quantity should also be proper and the quantity cannot compensate for quality quality cannot compensate for quantity so if i want to check 10 samples yes and for the 10 samples this is the evidence which i want i want both quantity also and quality also right so that is what you mean by s a a e sufficient appropriate audit evidence what is evidence it is information information on which the auditor forms his conclusion on which he bases this conclusion is yes, on the basis of which you form your opinion right so sufficient appropriate audit evidence clear everyone right have you understood sa ae and then as a you know wrap up of our discussion of sa 200 let's discuss the most important term over there that is audit Right, that is audit risk. Okay, audit risk is such an important discussion. So now I'm going to discuss audit risk and audit procedures with you. If you fail to understand audit risk, you will fail to understand the most of the standards on audit. It's like a prima facie requirement for you. I know that you have to understand the concept of the audit risk. Like you know, just as an example, I'm giving you. Like you know, if you have to go to a gurudwara, right? The you know the women when they or even the men, yes, you always have to keep your head covered, right? You have to put a scarf, a stole, the patta. Some you know you have to keep your head covered. Without that, you cannot enter over there. It's a prerequisite. Right. So similarly over here, if we have to enjoy our discussion of the standard, if we have to get marks, right, from our standards, we have to understand the concept of audit risk. Okay, right. So everyone, all good, right. So you know, earlier in the marathon batch, I used to directly take them to, uh, uh, you know, cloud nine or higher level. Then, then I used to realize, oh my God, uh, these people don't even know the basics of auditing. And then I am, you know, taking a talking to them or uh, further discussion. So no, so that's why I make my life easy by uh, discussing these basics terms with you first. Right? Paying attention, everyone. 
listening did you want follow whatever i discussed so far able to concentrate and nowadays there is a new uh, what you say a uh, new uh, observation or new hypothesis which is being proved that students who do the online classes are getting more marks than the students who go for face to face classes right rather in um, number 23 all india rank 1 for inter right uh, this uh, student uh, he got an all india rank 1 and uh, then he got 93 marks in audit so like you know 93 in audit is like unbelievable right so he had taken the uh, what you say a uh, recorded classes so i asked him that why did you go for recording like in you in, the student is from mumbai so i said you have so many face to face classes over there so bole no i cannot catch the speed because there it is start at one particular speed so if i need some thought to think about uh, or something i can always pause the video or i can you know run through some part of the video and all that and plus you know you the, if somebody cracks one joke the entire class starts uh, laughing also and then the you know you get distracted yeah and then there is going to the class getting ready coming back so yeah you are time bound so you guys have a luxury you know to pause the video to play the video of faculty like when i did my ca in 2008 No, no such luxury like when i wrote my ca final in november 2008 no luxury of a youtube channel or amendments or rtp nothing and no, no, you just do the class whenever you've studied and just listen to attend the class attend it lost do it on your own okay right so you should take it to your benefit right and now i have understood uh, that some students when they are first attempt they realize the importance of discipline some they take a few attempts and then they say okay nay you know i'm digging my own grave by you know, being distracted also okay right you know there is i always tell my students if i see you not paying attention i may come out of your computer screen also right so you see that you are you know watching the class and i you know come out of it you know to say oh what are you doing why you're not listening to what i'm saying what is it on earth so you'll be like okay no better you know she might just come out of the screen okay right so anyways let's uh, get on with a further discussion over there right so now let's discuss the concept of the audit risk okay right risk you know if something can go wrong you know that is risk if something can go right that cannot be risk okay now audit what is audit independent examination to express an opinion so my opinion could go wrong jo maine opinion form kiya tha wo galat ho gaya then a wrong opinion is audit risk if in case of satyam computer services limited their auditor kept on expressing an opinion true and fair true and fair true and fair in reality were the financial statements true and fair true and fair no 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 in reality in satyam computer there was a fraud of 7000 crore in the financial statements so what auditor should have said are 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 these financial statements are not free from material misstatement there is material fraud there is material error but what auditor kept on saying true and fair true and fair true and fair so did the opinion of the auditor go wrong yes right so possibility that the opinion the auditor expresses that opinion could go wrong is audit risk you express an opinion and your opinion may go wrong that is risk you know that is audit risk you say ma'am my opinion goes wrong every 6 months every attempt i say oh this time to ma'am certainly 50 to no where you know that too i am telling you on the safer side the result comes then you get 23 then you say oh ma'am you know this institute you know ma'am i've called for my paper again i don't know ma'am everything i had written i what it's like you know a failure has to be justified a success uh, makes it no noise okay ha huh. if that 50 you get 75 you thought you will get 50 but you get 75 then again no problem but you thought you said you will get 50 but you get something less than that becomes a problem okay right so true and fair view you know that's what auditor said but in reality they were not true and fair right so that is the audit risk so what does the technical definition of audit risk say it says the risk that what is audit risk it is the risk that what the auditor expresses and it create or 
ऑडिट ओपिनियन रोंग ऑडिट ओपिनियन गलत है appropriate audit opinion when the financial statements are materially misstated financial statements mein bhar bhar ke fraud hai bhar bhar ke error hai then auditor says don't worry everything is true and fair so that is audit risk okay is reverse possible ke auditor is saying in the audit report oh my god these financial statements so much fraud so much error but in reality no fraud no error they are true and fair it's say Theoretically, yes, but practically, this audit risk is ordinarily insignificant. Theoretically, is this also possible? The auditor wrote in the report there is a two thousand crore fraud in this company. In reality, there is no fraud. They are true and fair. Is this theoretically yes, but practically, which client will allow? Practically, which client will allow? Okay, their financial statements are true and fair, and you are saying they are not true and fair. So it says this audit risk is ordinarily insignificant and third audit of business risk you know you uh, you know nfra passes an order against the auditor you know nfra and they say that the firm has not been keeping the documentation not following the standards and so so obviously that affects your business you know some litigation is filed against you some adverse publicity so these auditors business risks are they covered in the audit risk that we are discussing no so for us audit risk means only one thing auditors said true and fair but they were not true and fair auditors said true and fair but in reality they were not true and fair only that is audit risk once please say the definition with me what is audit risk the risk that the auditor expresses and expresses an wrong audit opinion in appropriate audit opinion when when the financial statements are materially misstated right when the financial statements are materially misstated okay now right like i told you when i go for the audit client gives me the financial statements do they say auditor please state this is the list of fraud and error kindly report no so now they are saying yes they have given me the financial statements i have to express an opinion now in these financial statements which have been given to me for audit i have to check whether there is any fraud or error is there any material misstatement okay so now as a starting point to you know, understand the journey what we do we understand the entity and its environment that means we do the koc what is koc knowledge of the client's business right we obtain the knowledge from that knowledge of the client's business we identify the business risk what is the business risk anything which will adversely affect the achievement of entity objective okay what is the objective of the entity they want to they you know have a revenue of 100 crore next year Yes, that is their objective. But now, the product that they have launched, if there is a decline in the demand for the product, then they may not be able to achieve that target. So you know, decline in the demand for a product is a business risk because it will adversely affect the achievement of the entity objectives. If it you know increases the capacity, like rather than hundred crore, if their revenue becomes two hundred crore, no problem. but it says if it adversely affect the achievement of the entity objective then that is the business risk now for this business risk you have to think that can this business risk affect the financial statements will it have an impact on the financial statements if yes then that business risk is to be considered as an inherent risk what is inherent risk which is thereby default which is the possibility of a misstatement chances of fraud and error before yes consideration of controls i have not yet checked the controls in the company but before consideration of controls there is a chance of fraud and error there is a possibility of fraud and error okay so now say in a company i am checking the purchases example and i understood the entity and its environment and by understanding the entity and its environment i come to know that purchase price of raw material has increased and a purchase price of the raw material has increased okay now could this 
affect my financial statements? Yes. Right. So once this is the business risk, now I say it could affect financial statements. So now it becomes a inherent risk, you know, which is there by default. Okay, there might be under recording of purchases. You can have a risk saying that there could be over recording also or under recording. So I am saying that maybe actually the purchases of the company are 100 crore, but they record only 80 crore, 20 crore purchase they may not record. This is the risk which is there by default. There is a chance, not that they would have done, but there is a chance. Okay, there could be the under recording of the purchases. Now, is management aware of this? Okay, there are so many people recording the purchases in the company and there might be under recording of purchases? Yes. So even management is aware of this risk. Now, obviously they don't want it to happen, but there is a chance that it could happen. They don't want the under recording of purchases to happen, but there is a chance that there might be some employees which might do the under recording or management might do the under recording. So that is why the management designs the controls and the internal control. They have the design, implementation and maintenance of controls in the organization. And the design, implementation and maintenance. And the design, whether there is a policy for purchases, is that policy implemented? And is it implemented for the entire period for which the financial statements are being prepared? Right, so there is a risk that purchases may not be correctly recorded. Now what management want? Okay, purchases should be correctly recorded. So for that what they do? They design the controls in the organization. So now if the controls are designed in the organization, now 100% no chance of under recording of purchases? 100% there will be no fraud error in purchases? No. Still there is a chance that purchases may be Incorrect. Okay. Why? Because you have the inherent limitations of internal control. And the controls cannot give you 100% assurance of prevention, detection of fraud and error because of the inherent limitations. Right. So then what you do in that case? Right. So now you have to consider the control risk. What is control risk? The deficiency is an internal control. That the misstatement will not be prevented or detected and corrected on a timely basis by the entity's internal control. Right? So it will not be prevented, detected or corrected. So there is a chance that purchases may be incorrectly recorded. So for that ma management design the control. Now in spite of designing the control, there is still because of the inherent limitations of internal control, still some chance that purchases may not be correctly recorded. Right, so say originally, you know, the inherent risk, okay, out of 100 purchases recorded, example, 60 purchases of the company may be wrong. Right, so 60% is what? It is the inherent risk, example. And okay, 100 purchases, are, so it's a judgment, professional judgment. Okay, 60% purchases may be wrong, by default. So now, obviously, they don't want these 60% also to be wrong. So that is why they designed the controls. But controls are effective only to the extent of 50%. So only up to 50% controls can stop this from happening. That means 50% still remains as the control risk. Right? So now 50% still remains as the control risk. So original how much was the risk? Inherent risk? 60%. To what extent it is taken care of by the control? 50%. So how much is still remaining as the 50%. So now how much is remaining over here is the 30%. So earlier there was 60% chance that purchases may not be correctly recorded. Now to the extent of 50% taken care of by control. So now 50% still remaining. That means in my example 30%. Now who comes in the picture is the auditor. Auditor will perform audit procedures to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to detect any misstatement in the purchases. So now auditor when he is doing the substantive procedures for the purchases, he will try to detect the misstatement. Now can auditor give 100% guarantee, can leave it to me, whatever the management is not able to identify or controls are not able to identify, I will identify those misstatements? No. 
Why? Because there are inherent limitations of the audit also. There are inherent limitations of the audit also. So then what does auditor say? 80% I will be able to detect. 80% I will be able to detect. But 20% auditor says even I may not be able to detect. Right? So now that 20% is nothing but your detection risk. Even the audit procedures performed by the auditor to detect a misstatement may not detect the misstatement that exists. So now it came to 30%. And now for the detection risk is how much? 20%, right? So in total now, how much is the audit risk that we have over there? 6%, right? So you are able to reduce the risk up to 6%. Can you reduce it to zero? Never. Why? Because we always give only a reasonable assurance. Okay, let me put it once again. Okay, say I want checking the purchases of the company. I found that 60% is the chance that these purchases may not be correctly recorded. So that is inherent risk. Then I check the controls in the organization which will try to prevent this from happening. But controls are also able to take care of it only to the extent of the 50%. So now R is inherent risk into control risk that comes to 30%. Right now, these two risks, inherent risk and control risk, is called as the RMM. Hello? Risk of material misstatement, chances of fraud and error, risk that the financial statements may be materially misstated prior to audit. Is it that because I have come for the audit that 60% purchases may not be correctly recorded? No. Is it that because I have come for the audit, their controls are effective only to extent of 50%? No. It is already there. As an auditor, I only have to assess. It's beyond the control of the auditor. So, RMM, we assess. Now, how much is the RMM which we have identified? 30%. We have assessed 30%. Now, auditor on his part will perform the substantive procedures to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to detect a misstatement. What does auditor say? 80% I will be able to detect the misstatement. That means 20% auditor says even I may not be able to detect the misstatement. So then ultimately what is the audit risk which is remaining over here is the 6%. Right? So what we say audit risk is the function of risk of material misstatement and detection risk. And RMM and detection risk. What we say RMM we assess and detection risk we manage. And we also say audit risk is equal to IR into CR into DR. And inherent risk into control risk into detection risk. Okay, so now inherent risk. Like, let me give an offbeat example over here. Okay, now say there is a company which is a, what do you say, a, say probably a car dealer. And there is a company which is a car dealer. Right? So say it's uh, dealing into all these, uh, what do you say, uh, luxury cars, like, you know, they have the, you know, different, different, like uh, Mercedes and Jaguar and all these, you know, all the different cars over there. Okay, so now for this company, which has got all these cars in their inventory, is the risk that the employees who are working in the company, they might just take away one of the car and go. And they might just take away one of the car and go. That is the inherent risk. So example, you say, you know, ma'am, they won't do like that. But yeah, there is a possibility that 30-40% they may do so. Okay. Now, obviously, will the management take steps to ensure that they don't just take away the car and go? Right? So that is why the controls will be designed. But now, control, there may be a weakness. There may be a deficiency. What is the deficiency? That the gate of the car showroom is kept open. And so now, is there an inherent risk? Yes, that the employee might run away with the car. Second, is there a control risk? Yes, the gates of the company have been kept open, no CCTV camera, nothing. Now, is there the chance that the employee may run away with the car? Is there a possibility that he may run away with the car? Yes. But now, what is the problem? The employee does not know how to drive the car. So, will he be able to execute it? No. 
will he be able to execute it no so there is a car but a gate is also open and employees also if it knows how to drive the car then he can execute it but you know what does it say C car is there then the what you say gate is also open but the employee does not know how to drive the car then he cannot execute it right so that's like the detection risk okay right so ir into cr into dr so our entire audit is what we call it as the risk based audit approach then right? we don't do donkey work we do the monkey work when we have to do the audit of the financial statements i have to do the audit of the entire financial statement debtor creditor pp inventory sale purchase electricity traveling royalty each and every item related party contingent liability leases entire financial statements but will i put equal effort in doing audit of each area will i put same amount of effort no i will go for a risk based audit approach i will go for a risk based audit approach so example say there are 200 items in the financial statement example will i do audit of all 200 yes but will i put equal effort in doing audit of all 200 no what i will do i will do an abc analysis of the financial statements Okay, these are the two hundred items. Out of that two hundred items, I identify the RMM, risk of material misstatement, where there is a chance of fraud and error. And out of the RMM, I identify the SR. What is SR? Yes, everyone, it is significant risk. It is an RMM which requires the special audit consideration, VVIP treatment. and the special audit consideration right so now what does it mean total 200 items in the financial statements out of that 197 and 3 so now maximum of my audit procedures will be dedicated for these three items because there is an sr then i will do some additional checking for the seven items and these 190 items normal checking so am i doing the audit of entire financial statements yes but am i putting equal effort in doing audit of all no where risk is more i do more checking i know where risk is more i do more checking so let's say example normally for inventory normally example okay for inventory i check 50 samples whether there is a risk there is no risk i check 50 but when i come to know oh in this inventory there is a chance of rmm then i increase my sample size to 70 then i say oh my god this inventory there is an sr significant risk now i might decide to check the 90 samples for inventory just giving you an example in any case am i going to check 50 samples ha huh, whether there is a risk there is no risk 50 i will always check you understand no say you are studying for ca final fr i don't know how many chapters but say there are 10 chapters are you going to study all 10 chapters yes but out of that two chapters you find them very difficult and one to goes over your head so that one chapter which goes over your head you will study it five times then two chapters which you find them difficult you will study them three times and in four three times and then this other seven chapters you might study them like two times or do normal practice for it So, are you studying all the ten chapters? Yes. Are you understanding? We go for a risk-based audit approach, and the first step, you know, risk-based audit approach. You know, RRR the movie came later. We had the concept of RRR much before it came into the movie. Right? So, risk-based audit approach talks about the RRR. What is this RRR? It is the risk. Oh, yeah. yes it is the risk it is the response and it is the reporting right so risk response and the reporting right so risk is discussed in sa315 then response is discussed in sa330 and reporting is discussed first in sa450 and then for 450 we go to 700 or 705 right so what is the title of sa315 identifying and assessing what the risk of material misstatement how through understanding the entity and its environment to so, samjho entity ko fabric 
है ना यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द फैब्रिक ऑफ योर क्लाइंट एंड आइडेंटिफाई एंड असेस द आर एन बी के व्हाट इज द इनहेरेंट रिस्क व्हाट इज द कंट्रोल रिस्क देन यू नो के दीस आर द एरियाज व्हिच आर फ्रॉड एरर प्रोन एरियाज नाउ यू नीड टू रिस्पोंड सो व्हाट इज द टाइटल ऑफ एसए 330 द ऑडिटर्स रिस्पोंसिबल टू असेस रिस्क व्हिच असेस रिस्क रिस्क व्हिच वी असेस इन एसए 315 and then finally evaluation of misstatements identified during the audit okay so let me continue with my example of purchases okay you say ma'am ma'am listen no ma'am i think purchases no ma'am there is some problem i know so no problem you think that purchases there is a problem so there is a risk of material misstatement okay then accordingly now what i do for purchases i give it vvip treatment and a special hai na so i increase the nature timing and extent of my audit procedures more checking okay normally purchases i would have checked 50 but now they are saying there is a risk in purchases so i say let's check 80 okay so now you say okay i think purchases something is wrong okay accordingly for purchases we increase the nature timing and extent of our audit procedure now ultimately what can happen two things What is one thing which may happen? No problem. There's so much purchases I check, कुछ नहीं मिला. Nothing I found out. Nothing you found out. Go to SI seven hundred unmodified opinion. Happy life. You say, see, I was telling you only no purchases. There is some problem. There looks like there will be some problem. See, we found out. Okay, purchases are you know or under recorded by fifty crore. So now what has happened? You have identified a misstatement in the. audit so what to do of these misstatements identified during the audit is what we discuss in sa 450 do you understand what i say you understand so you say oh ma'am i think they are related party transactions there is a problem then what to do increase nature timing extent of audit procedure and then see ma'am i was telling you only no or yeah ma'am i checked so much but nothing i found i don't know why i was thinking there is something wrong so it could be either way no so that is how you try to find a get that free from material misstatement dekho apna lakshya kya hai what is our objective to obtain reasonable assurance that financial statements are free 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 from material misstatement no material fraud and error so what is our starting point for that we start with where all there is a risk of material misstatement and then we obtain do the responses to the assessed risk and then we say they are free or we say oh no no they are not free there is material misstatement and then we modify our opinion as per sa 705 Yes, you think you've understood? Because whether you've understood or not, that time will tell. But right now, at least, are you under the notion that you know, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, I've understood what you're talking about. No, huh? I'm thinking. Got it? Oh my God! Yes, you got it, Mr. Thomas. Got it? Okay, great, great, great. Yes, all these names later on, which I am seeing right now over here, I have to see them in the merit list of the ICI. Okay, yeah, I have to on the day of the result, you know, I need to see. Oh, all these same names which I saw in my chat box that day, same list of mails in my inbox that day. Deal, you say, ma'am, deal done. Very good, very good. Chal, now let's study something more. Okay, I'll give you a break. Don't think, you know, start start looking at the clock. because you know i am more in need of a break than you you're just listening to me i i'm speaking no so yeah so yeah so don't worry i will give the break you don't think about it i you just study everything else will be taken care of okay right so let's continue right so audit risk okay listen to this audit risk is the function of risk of material misstatement and detection risk rmmv rmmv assess and detection risk we manage or we try to limit it and we try to limit it can we make it zero no you know inherent limitations of audit and inherent limitations of controls also okay so now in the audit what is our game 
in the audit our game is to assess rmm and to limit detection risk to assess rmm the procedures performed by the auditor are called as risk assessment procedure and to manage or to limit the detection risk the procedures performed by the auditor are the further audit procedures right so audit procedures so these two put together are my audit procedures such a important chart to obtain audit evidence audit procedures to obtain the audit evidence what are these audit procedures risk assessment procedures further audit procedure risk assessment you know you have to assess rmm so for that you perform the risk assessment procedure and then you have to manage the detection risk for which you perform the further audit procedures and these two put together are my audit procedures right so risk assessment procedures to assess the rmm further audit procedures to manage the detection risk so this is nothing but my audit risk See here, I start with audit risk. Here, I end with audit risk. Your audit procedure, audit procedure. Are you able to link the two? Okay, in an audit, kai karai sir, what you have to do in an audit? Assess RMM. To assess RMM, what you need to do? Risk assessment procedure. Then, in an audit, you need to manage the detection risk. For that, what you need to perform is the further audit procedures. Risk assessment procedures are discussed in SA three one. Five further audit procedures are discussed in SA three thirty. I told you now R R R. So these are the first two R risk and response, risk assessment procedures and further audit procedures. Right. So if you look at audit procedures, what are the audit procedures given in SA five hundred? Now who is SA five hundred? Audit evidence. You know audit evidence. Right. So, what are the audit procedures? You have the RAF and the FAF. What is RAF? Risk assessment procedures discussed in SA three one five and further audit procedures discussed in SA three thirty. What is further audit procedure? Further divided under two. What are the two? Test of control (TOC) and substantive procedures. है ना? Test of Controls. You test the controls in the organization, and then substantive procedures. You know, substantiate to check the supportings to substantiate, and you know, to get the supportings. Right. So that's the substantive procedures. Right. So what do you do in an audit? Tomorrow you are appointed as auditor of Reliance Industries. You have to start with the audit. You have to do the audit of financial statements. Express an opinion. You will have to start with the risk assessment. What will happen by doing the risk assessment? You will be able to assess the RMM. Once risk assessment is done, now you check the OE. Who is OE? Who is OE? You know ORI, but do you know OE? Yes, what is OE? It is the correct operating effectiveness, the design, dim 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 dim, design, implementation, and maintenance of controls in the organization, which is nothing but your compliance procedures, right? So that is test of control, and after you do the control testing, then you decide the nature, timing, and extent of your substantive procedures. If controls are effective, less substantive. If controls are ineffective, more substantive procedures. And then substantive procedures to substantiate. There are two ways. One, you go for test of details. That means you go for detail checking, vouching, verification, tiki tuki tiki tuki tiki tuku tiki tuk. And in turn, how will you vouch or like verify the following? So test of detail, or you go for substantive. Analytical procedures. Analytical. Compare with previous year. Compare with budgets. Compare with industry. Compare with non-financial information. So that is substantive analytical. Then third one, agreeing the financial statements to underlying records. Yes, agreeing financial statements to underlying records. Financial statements, balance sheet. Balance sheet, schedule. Schedule, 
ट्रायल बॅलन्स ट्रायल बॅलन्स लेजर लेजर बुक ऑफ प्रायमेंटरी बुक ऑफ प्रायमेंटरी वाउचर सो अग्रीन दी फायनान्शियल स्टेटमेंट टू अंडरलाईन रेकॉर्ड ओके अँड लास्ट बट नॉट द लिस्ट एक्झामिनिंग मटेरियल जर्नल एंट्री है ना जर्नल एंट्री जे वी टेस्टिंग ऑल द ओपनिंग क्लोजिंग राईट ऑफ प्रोव्हिजन एंट्री सो एक्झामिनिंग मटेरियल जर्नल एंट्री राईट सो दिस इज वॉट वी डू इन अन ऑडिट वी डू रिस्क असेसमेंट देन वी डू कंट्रोल टेस्टिंग अँड देन सबस्टँटिव सबस्टँटिव इदर रो इदर डिटेल or substantive or both by hook or by crook what we want is saae sufficient appropriate audit evidence and in addition to the hook or crook we also do these additional two as a part of our substantive procedures we agree the financial statements to underlying records company audit also company reporting also you have to say whether the balance sheet profit and loss account are they in agreement with the books of account and so agreeing to underlying records and i'll talk more about journal entries once we meet after the break and after we complete with our discussion for the audit procedures audit evidence and so then we will come to another super duper important discussion is your engagement letter sa210 and then your 700 audit report series and then we'll try to cover one of the other chapter also right so 10 minute break and then we quickly come back Right so see you all after the break